Hey everybody, it's Pastor Ronnie and welcome to Raw and Real. We're going to tackle another difficult question today about prosperity. You don't want to miss this. The short answer is absolutely not, but I want to give some background uh, to this question because there is so much confusion in the kingdom of God about wealth and prosperity and all of those kinds of things. There are prosperity principles in the Bible, but because a few preachers have perverted those principles, now anytime you teach those principles, you get accused of being a prosperity preacher. I have a message titled, Are You Blessed?, uh, that we'll share with you. And it's 47 minutes long because context is key. You need to hear the whole message and all the verses to be able to wrap your mind around the truth of God's Word. But the Bible says that Abraham was wealthy. And he was wealthy because of his obedience. He was rich in cattle. He was rich in silver. He was rich in gold. The Bible says in Deuteronomy that God has given us the ability to produce wealth. So having wealth is not a sin. The question is, does wealth have you? Having money is not a sin. The question is, does money have you? When Jesus addressed the rich young ruler, he had it going on. But when he said, if you want to be perfect, and that word in Matthew in the Greek means brought to maturity. If you want to walk in complete maturity, go sell all your possessions, give them to the poor, and follow me. It wasn't as if Jesus was saying, listen, it's a sin to have possessions. It's a sin to have wealth. Jesus wasn't saying that. Jesus was a contractor. Jesus wore nice clothes. The Bible describes the carpenter outfit that he wore, and the reason they were gambling over his clothes at the cross was not to mock him. It's because those clothes were expensive, and they wanted those clothes. And so I will say this. It is not a sin to have wealth as long as wealth doesn't have you. But Jesus also said, you know, that it's, it is easier Here's what it says, for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. What was Jesus saying there? It is harder for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God and be spirit-led. Why? Because they have everything this world has to offer. It's hard for them. It doesn't mean they are exempt or they're not welcome into the kingdom of God. It means they don't have to rely on God like the rest of us. I've been overseas many times. I do mission work. We've done crusades. I'm always amazed when we do these crusades in poor third world countries. They'll sit in the lightning and the rain, and they'll wait all night to hear the gospel to receive prayer. We can't even get people in the United States of America to come to church three out of four weeks. There's a desperation when people are in poverty that people that have wealth don't have. And so what Jesus meant was, listen, it is difficult, not impossible. But it is difficult because whether you are rich or poor, you must humble yourselves and come to the King of Kings and understand that everything you have is His. He gave you the ability to produce it, to create it, and you can't take it with you. So whether you have millions or you have cents, God loves you. He loves you. He died for you. And when you accept His grace and mercy, and you seek ye first His kingdom, you have access to everything that the King has. And so if you're going to be a good steward, God will bless you with wisdom, with money, with resources, if He can trust you with it. Can God trust you with His kingdom? Next, people ask the question, well, should preachers have money? And any preacher that has anything gets criticized. You know, my father uh, gave his entire media ministry back to our church. He was one of the most humble pastors and giving pastors in the world. And people accused my father of being a millionaire and having a plane and all this crazy stuff that he never had. He had every right to have those things, but he chose to sow them. But he still caught criticism. You know, we don't have any problem with a quarterback making a hundred million dollars a year a baseball player a soccer player 
But if you built a school or a church or you've been in ministry 40 years and you drive a nice car, all of a sudden you're public enemy number one. I really think that needs to change in the kingdom of God because it's very hypocritical. Let me give you an example. If a church takes in $10 million a year, say they have 20,000 members, and the pastor doesn't take a salary from that church because the pastor is wealthy in business, perhaps his wife is wealthy in business, he has outside resources coming in and refuses a salary, then look at all that money that goes into missions and ministry. Likewise, if a church has 40 members, they take in 100,000 a year, and they're paying the pastor 80,000 a year, and they're only doing ministry with 20,000, which one do you think is making the biggest impact in the kingdom of God. You see, prosperity is not just about millions, it's about your heart. If you are a part of a church and 80% of the wealth goes to take care of one person, that's not of God either. Just because you don't have a plane and a mansion doesn't mean that you're operating in God's principles. So you have to be smarter. Uh, than the average bear to understand this. Some churches that have the wealth do more, feed more people, lead more people to Christ. It's not a competition, but when you criticize a larger ministry, you need to understand the books, the percentages, the behind the scenes of even small churches. I say we all give each other grace. As long as we're being true to the Word of God, we're seeing people repent of their sins and come to Christ, we need to be for one another. There's far too much fighting in the body of Christ about wealth and prosperity. I choose to err on the side of grace to believe the best about people. We have enough fighting in this world, and I don't have a problem with you being blessed. I can say for our church at Abbas House, 46% of what comes into this church goes to pay a staff of about 36 people. The rest of it goes into ministry. So we're a ministry of integrity. Ronnie Phillips Ministries International, the media ministry, is a ministry of integrity. We focus on the message of grace, media, and mission work to help people. And that's what it is all about. So make sure wherever you're serving God, that you're doing things ethically, biblically, and spiritually. But before you criticize somebody else, make sure you know the facts behind the scenes because you can really do damage to the body of Christ if you don't know the facts. So it is not a sin to have things. I hope you're blessed. I want to be blessed. We all want to be blessed. Why? So we can be a blessing. Hey, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this very difficult question on Raw and Real today. I have a message titled, Are You Blessed? has so much scripture in it, really gives you the raw and real for 47 minutes. We didn't have enough time to cover everything that has to do with wealth and blessing today, but if you'll watch that message, you'll subscribe to our content, you'll share it with your friends, you will be blessed. We hope you'll continue to tune in and follow everything we do. God bless.